Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your guy Realistic and I'm doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and in this one I'm going to show you how to build affordable built-in bass traps. It's really important to know that these are going to be built-in right to the wall. I will kind of go over briefly of making ones that aren't built-in but I'm not going to show you how to do those today. I'm going to show you how to do the built-in ones. But first, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. That way you can stay up to date with our latest videos and tutorials and also you'll be able to get tips and tricks directly onto your mobile feed as well. And also Oracle and I do have an online mixing course. We have two of them, the art of vocal mixing and the art of beat mixing. Both of them are filled worth of hours worth of content and there's several videos in there to really give you all the information that you need to know to know how to mix professionally. So what I'll do is I'll put the link in the description below for you to be able to check that out. So let's dive in. This video is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I am going to be showing you how to actual build things and I'm going to be explaining the details of how the things are built and I also do want to explain a little bit of how the base traps work and why we design them so they're effective. So what we're going to be doing here is I got a head start so you don't have to watch me like screw in some certain things but what we're going to do here is we're gonna, uh, we got these shelves created. So we got a, we got three of them. We got a bottom, we got a middle, and then we have a top shelf. And so the ideal then is what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff these with rock wool. You could also use 703 panels if you wanted. I feel like for corners, rock wool is a lot easier to stuff because it's a little bit more flexible. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're going to cover this up with some fabric so it's covered and sealed. And then what we're gonna do is put some wood frames on it. So the end, re so we're gonna take this and the end result is actually going to look like this right over here. So this will be the end result of what we want that to be over here. This right here is stuffed with our actual rock wool. It's a, it's a full, built-in corner base trap right there. And then I built a nice wood frame. You don't have to do the wood frame, but for me, I felt like aesthetically, this really looked professional. I felt like it really made it look more like a studio and kind of really gave it just an overall nice natural vibe to the entire room. But again, you could skip this part if you wanted. The, the main thing is building the corner base traps. Now, if you do skip this part, what you're gonna wanna do is instead because what I did was I built the frame on the outside. If you skip that part, you're gonna actually wanna build a, a frame more on the inside and then cover it up. That way, you know, your staples have a little bit room to go. Now, before we dive into that, what I do wanna do is I do wanna uh, throw this over here is I have a non-built-in base trap. So this is also an option because this when you do it this way, you are going to um, you know, mess up the walls a little bit as far as you're gonna be putting a lot more holes in the wall. And I get that not everybody has that situation, whether they're in an apartment or something like that. Um, the reason why I went with built-in is for uh, two reasons. One, I do think that it sounds better if they're built right in. And then number two, um, I have a bunch of these base traps. However, they're four feet uh, each and this right here is only a seven foot ceiling and so I'm not able to stack two on top of each other so I would have had to build a, uh, a new three foot one anyways and so I figured I'll just go ahead and just build it right into the wall because one I think it will sound better I do think they look better as well but the main thing that if you do want to do it this way um, and we won't get into this too deep, but the main thing that you want to do is you want to build a wood frame. So we got top, sides, and then the thing with the middle is the middle that won't have the wood frame. This will just be either fiberglass or rock wool, right? And same with the uh, back rail right here. That way there's some ability for the sound to get absorbed in. But yeah, what you do want to do is you want to build that wood frame. And then from there, you just set the wood frame down on the fabric. So it's it's got a lock. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to stuff in all the fiberglass or the rock wool. Get it in there really tight. 
This one is six inches deep. And usually for base traps, you usually want to go about six inches. You probably could go get away with four, but I think that for a base trap, you want you want to get a little bit more sizing in there, whether it's it's six or or eight inches when it comes to the the actual depth of it. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind too, when it comes to uh, base traps, whether you're doing it this way or you're doing the shelving system that I have over here is you want to make sure that the uh, edges are beveled. And so what I mean by that is you see that these are at an angle. They're not like a perfect square. And that way you'll uh, be able to tuck this into a corner. And then you also want to make sure the top is cut off. That way there's an air gap. And we'll get into why the air gaps are important in a moment. Um, I'll go over how to actually build the, the beveled edges in a second here. Um, when it comes to the uh, ones that aren't built in, uh, all you gotta do is just grab some Z-clips and uh, just screw them in there. And then you have a Z-clip on the wall uh, going the opposite direction. And then from there, all you gotta do is just slide them in and they'll hang from there. <clears throat> now, as far as the actual beveled edges, all you gotta do for that is you just gotta take a, a board, right? You take a board and you wanna cut it into a perfect square. So whatever this length is, you wanna to go to the same length here. So right, so now you'll have like a perfect square. And then from there, all you gotta do is just cut it diagonally in half, right? So then from there, you now have this angled area, right? And so now these will be your beveled edges to go into the corner, right? And then this right here will be your, your front, your flat surface. So then from there, all you gotta do is just cut this corner off so you have the air gap. And that's really important, again, to have the air gap. Now, for me, this is all I did to build this shelving system. I know visually, when you look at this, this doesn't look like the coolest thing I've ever made in my life. But the thing is, is the reason why I did it this way, and I'm sure you'll be able to come up with something way, way cooler and way more visually appealing than this, but for me, what I had did was this was more cost effective and this was more time effective for me. And what I mean by that was literally as I was building this studio, I spent so much money on wood and lumber and all this other stuff. Um, I had all these extra scrap pieces. I had literally these are all drop pieces from when we were sawing off different uh, pieces of wood. This was different uh, uh, pieces of scrap wood that I had um, just left over from building the studio. And so what I did was instead of going to Home Depot and buying a bunch of material for selling uh, equipment, I just had all this extra scrap. And so I was like looking like, yeah, it doesn't look like the coolest thing, but it's literally just me. All I did was just, you know, just take these extra pieces, screw them on, and then screw them right onto the wall. And the thing is, is it was basically free because it was all scrap wood. And then also, uh, it was really fast to do. I had to make three for each corner. So that's a total of 12. And I got all 12 of them done in about 15 minutes. So that's the reason why they don't look super cool because you know, they was about being cost effective and time efficient. And uh, the thing is, is it's about to get stuffed with rock wool and covered with fabric anyways. So nobody is going to actually see what it looks like. All right, and then two, if you, if you really wanted to, you could build a, a frame inside of it if you wanted to. For me, I felt like that wasn't gonna be the most cost effective, uh, especially because the walls are already gonna work as a frame and I am putting a frame on the outside. But if you really did wanna do that, you could definitely build a frame inside. But again, it is gonna cost you a little bit more money. It's gonna take you a little bit more time. And you're also going to also have to factor in that when you build that frame, you are going to lose a little bit more space. So you'll have a little less rock wool or fiberglass in there. Now, something else to factor in is how big do you want the base trap to be? I'm sure you could tell on the camera that these are a little bit smaller than the one that I have right here, right? This is, this is much wider. Well, when I had built these, it was a much bigger room. So one thing that you do have to keep in mind is the size of the room 
And this, for me, this is a temporary spot. We're only gonna be here for the, about another seven months. And then my girlfriend and I are actually gonna buy a nice home uh, with a really big room that I can turn into the studio. So then I'll, I'll rebuild the bass traps and I'll make them more this size, but just factor in the size of the room because you know, if I were to make them that size, I would be losing this much on each corner and I would have shrunk the room down a little bit. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, unfortunately when it comes to home studios, we're almost rarely never in a perfect situation as far as how we want the room to be set up as far as the sizing, acoustic and stuff. And so when we're building home studios, we do have to work around the room that we're in. So if you're in a smaller room, maybe go with a little bit smaller of a bass trap. And also think about too, if you're in a smaller room, you may not need uh, a bigger bass trap anyways as far as absorption. But yeah, if you're in a bigger room, you definitely wanna go the, the larger route. All right, so last thing before we actually get into building this thing is I want to explain the the air gaps of why we want the air gap. So we have a few air gaps going on. We have uh, air gap on the bottom. This right here is about two inches. You could even, if you wanted to, you could go up to about four or five inches uh, for the sizing of the room. I felt like two inches was... Uh, the right way to go. And then you see too, we do have these uh, cut off corners. So there's an air gap going all the way up to the top and bottom. And then up top too, when we pull that fabric down later, you'll see that there's an air gap up there. And the reason why we wanna have the air gap is again, these aren't called base gates or base blocks. These are called base traps. And so when you have a trap, the ideal is that you want to invite something in and then trap it in. So the, the concept is is the bass frequencies because they love they love to go low, right? So what you what the ideal is is that the bass will come down here and and work its way up into this air pocket, but then on this side it's gonna be stuffed with rock wool, right? Because we're not gonna stuff the rock wool right up to the corner. We're gonna stuff the rock wool right up to about here. So again, the base frequencies will come up and then they'll get trapped in with the actual uh, rock wool or fiberglass, whatever you may be using. All right, so that's that's kind of the concept on that. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll start building this and I'll show you kind of the concept of it so then you can build your own from there. Now, when working with uh, rock wool, uh, I think it's really important a few things here. You're definitely gonna wanna wear gloves, um, rock wool and fiberglass, uh, cause the stuff can get really itchy. You're also going to wanna make sure that you have some long sleeves on, some long pants, some uh, shoes on that aren't gonna expose anything. You don't wanna risk irritating your skin at all. Uh, I do recommend some type of safety glasses. These are safety glasses here. Uh, cause this stuff does kind of break and flake off and you don't want to risk that getting in your eye. And then the last thing is you want to make sure that you have some sort of mask on so you're not breathing this stuff in. Um, cause this stuff can be a little hard on the lungs, can be a little bit dangerous. The good news though is, is once we get this stuffed in here, we're going to lock and seal this in there. Uh, so that way we don't have to worry about it you know, being in the air forever when we're actually in our studio. But while handling it, you do wanna make sure that you have your protective gear on. All right, and then as far as what we're going to need for tools to be able to execute this, we are going to need a staple gun because we're gonna be stapling the fabric into the shelving system. And then also eventually what we're gonna need is we're going to need a drill and we're gonna need a set of screws because we're gonna be uh, drilling in those uh, wood panels at the end. So that's pretty much all that we'll need. And then as far as other material, I'm sure you kind of already got the concept. You're gonna need some shelving system. You're gonna need some rock wool or fiberglass. And then you're going to need some type of seal. And then you're gonna need some type of fabric. So those are all the materials to be able to do. This is really affordable too. Um, you should be able to make, you know, all four base traps in your room for maybe less than $100 versus having to go out and buy it. You know, you could spend literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, if you were using foam, which foam doesn't work at all, it's a waste of money, but even the foam would cost you 
probably $500 to treat the room. Whereas you can actually build a really cool looking one by yourself, make it a lot better uh, quality, make it a better build, and it will actually work and absorb sound, and you can do it for under $100. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually build this thing. I'll kind of be building it and give you instructions on how to do that. Uh, my girlfriend Maya is about to come in and join in a moment to give me a helping hand. I do recommend for this, especially when it comes to stuffing the, the corners and adding the frame if you have a second hand. That way you could just make things a little bit more accurate and get things a little bit better in. So she's about to come over and what we'll do is we'll start by stuffing the uh, rock wool in here. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to start with the top one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the uh, fabric and the uh, sealant here. And then we'll staple it in. That way it has a, a place to already be rested without it falling down. And then we'll do the second one after that. All right, so I already got my rock wool pre-measured. Uh, one thing that I have a suggestion on here is when you're working with uh, fiberglass or you're working with... Um, some type of rock wool. I, I recommend picking up a turkey cutter, actually. Um, AJ uh, recommended this to me and it works really well because uh, I used to use box cutters or knives to cut the rock wool and the fiberglass, but it would always come out, you know, uneven or something like this. But this just lets you saw right through the actual rock wool or fiberglass. And since this is a, a straight blade, it gives you a really even cut. So if you do have to cut your rock wool or trim down your uh, fiberglass, I recommend a turkey cutter. All right, so let's go ahead and start with stuffing this panel here. Uh, I have one, I pre-cut these so you don't have to sit there and watch me cut. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff this right into here but let me put my mask on. Totally forgot about that. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and stuff this in. And what we'll do is we're gonna stuff this in right as a, uh, uh, right into the corner. You just gotta kind of push that in just a little bit here. The thing is, is you don't wanna push it all the way in though, because you do wanna make sure that you have that air gap. That's kind of why the rock wool works better than the fiberglass for the corner base straps because you do need to kind of, uh, you know, stuff it in there. And then what I what I had it did here was I had all these extra scrap pieces. So I figured what I'll do is I'll use this real quick for the centerpiece. From there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the sealant. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll actually staple in the sealant on the first shelf here. Make sure this is nice and tight. And then all we gotta do is just staple in. Now you may be wondering what is the sealant for? This is for our safety. Uh, this stuff can be very dangerous if it's floating in the air. Uh, this is really, really super thin. So I know some of you out there may be overthinking like, oh, that's gonna mess up the absorption and the actual acoustics. It's not, it's actually just gonna give you a little bit safer. All right, so we have the first one in and before we add the fabric, what I wanna do is I do wanna add in the uh, next layer. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is let's, you know, I figure let's seal up the top so nothing falls down and then we'll get the bottom, we'll seal that up. And then that way everything else is easy going from there. So with this one, the way that I measured it is I didn't need to cut these because I had actually literally put the um, the shelving to be this size. It's just that top one because these these are four feet tall and this room is not eight feet tall. So I had to cut one down to three feet. So same thing here, we will stuff this in and just kind of make sure that it's not all the way to the corner. That way we have a little bit of, uh, of an air gap going. Um, Cause again, that's really important as far as us wanting to uh, stuff this in. And again, too, you can see why this is kind of important to have that, that second hand here. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're going to staple in the, uh, the sealant right at the bottom here. That way it has a, uh, a nice little lock.
so we got that tucked in. And again, I know there are going to be some people out there that, you know, swear they're acousticians, uh, acousticians, and they're going to just completely destroy me in the comments that there is a sealing sealant on there but honestly uh when it comes to your health and safety uh i think that is going to be that is something that's important and that you want to consider especially when dealing with rock wool and fiberglass there is a lot of dangerous material so i'm steering on the way of caution skip this if you want and if you're really that person that that feels like it's that important skip it but just know that you are running some risk on your health when you do that uh, all right, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to drop down the fabric and staple that in. Same process. And as you can see, too, I, I had already had everything stapled up top. That way, again, you don't have to watch me do all that, and we can just go from there. So for this, I'm going to take off the gloves since the rock wool is, is uh, complete and uh, the fabric will be a little bit easier to handle. Same thing that we did with the sealant, we are going to staple this directly into the, um, the frame here, or the shelf, I should say. same thing with the sealant that we did we're just gonna tuck in the uh, fabric a little bit so it looks a little bit better now as far as the uh, the bagginess that's going on uh, don't worry too much uh, don't waste too much time trying to get this perfect because what's gonna happen is we're about to put a wood frame over this in a moment and that's gonna lock that right in place if you look over here uh, on this one this one was built exactly the same, and at the time it was it was loose, but once this wood frame came in, it locked everything in. So I really encourage you not to uh, waste too much time trying to be a perfectionist on this, because when we add the wood frame, it's gonna put it exactly where you need, and you know, if you can save time, why not save time? So let's go back here. We'll continue to uh, stuff the sides a little bit, and then once the wood frame gets in there too, we can stuff the sides even better. Um, I just like to get a little bit of a start on that, just so it, it's a little bit easier when we get to that point. All right, and then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these wood boards that I have, and these will be our actual frame. And so what I went ahead and did beforehand here, so you can see, is I actually drilled holes in here already it just makes it a little bit easier if you actually drill a hole in so then when you put the screw in uh you don't have to worry one it's easier and two uh you have less chance of splitting the wood if you drill it so i went ahead and i drilled holes on the for the top shelf the middle shelf and the bottom uh everything is pre-measured like i said i went ahead and did a lot of the pre-measurement stuff and and pre-shelving just so uh we would save some time so what I recommend for this is start with the edges. So what I mean by that is you want to start with this side and you want to start with this side and then we can add the uh, center pieces in afterwards. Uh, I find that when you do it that way, it gives you a little bit more of a uh, um, ability to space them out properly in between because we already know these are going to go right to the edge, right? All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drill these in. Uh, for this, I'm, I'm just using some uh, drywall screws because they're, they're not too long. And so I feel like that's a, a good uh, length for something like this because we don't want to go too deep into that shelf because otherwise we could run the risk of uh, splitting it. So we'll use these drywall screws. Uh, we are going to need a power drill. And uh, for the top, at least, we'll need a ladder. And then I will have uh, Maya come back over here so she can hold uh, one of these in place. I think uh, it's, it's like I said, a second hand is really nice because you wanna make sure these are straight and even. So if you can have somebody to hold it in place, that will help a lot.
thing that we're going to do is we're just going to kind of tuck the fabric in a little bit so it, it looks visually uh, better. Uh, one thing I recommend for tucking in fabric is use like some type of a knife or blade and then you can kind of just push it in there. Uh, you know just just be subtle with it. You obviously don't want to go and, and stab the uh, hole, stab holes through the fabric but it just kind of lets you get in there a little bit better. You kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of tucking that in there. So as you can see, we have our finished corner base trap right here. And uh, you know, we did 45 degree angles for all the corners now. And so that's also gonna really help too because we don't have any right angles in the room at the moment. It's just all going to be these 45 degree angles. So, you know, fairly easy. We just built a shelving system, stuffed it with rock wool, put a ceiling on it, put a um, some fabric on it, and then we uh, build this little wood frame. Again, you don't have to build the wood frame on the outside, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you, when you look at this, you kind of look and like, okay, that actually does look professional or something that I would see in a studio. So it kind of just adds to the peel. But, uh, you know, feel free to customize this. You do not have to do it the same way I did. You can definitely make it your own. Uh, but you have the basics, you know, shelving system, stuff with rock wool, fabric, and then you're, you're good to go from there. So uh, as long as you have the basics, you know, you'll be able to do whatever you want. Maybe you will even come up with something way better than I will. I'm, I'm sure that you will. Um, you know, I'm not quite a uh, builder or a construction worker. I just do a lot of stuff uh, to build my studio to save money on, on labor costs and uh, material costs. And so that's kind of why I do that. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learn how to make your own base traps at home. And like I said before, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can stay up to date with the latest videos. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Believe it or not, it actually really goes a long way of helping out with the algorithm and helping out with the channel to grow. All right, so you have all the info to make your own base traps. And if anybody makes any base traps or anything, or if anybody decides to make a base trap based off the video, feel free to uh, message me. Let me know how it was. I'd love to see pictures and uh, talk about how it went for you in, in the whole process. So just let me know. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel right here so you can catch the latest tutorials on mixing, mastering, and production. And you can check out some of our suggested videos here, here, and here. And of course, if you're looking for premium loops and samples, you can find that at soundoracle.net. We got plenty to choose from.